that actually it, it was an orange uh, orchard, one of the one of the organic the first organic uh, agriculturalists in Greece 25 years ago. So like it is a very strange like interesting story that some years ago they do a big pruning. Uh, uh, pruning, cluttering, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the land. So, like, they reduce the amount of leaves of the, the trees, and a lot of light came into the land. So that practically means a lot of light gave a lot of possibilities for a new life to come. Boom. Mm -hmm. So, like, a lot of fruit trees start bobbing up in, like, mulberries, mainly, and other, like, species inside this orchard. Organic one, very good soil, and black, black like this with soil. So like a research happened from Saladarmos, like the, the owner of this place, me, no, that place, <laughs> about creating food forest and how you can implement agroforestry inside there. So at the moment are in a transition to an educational land and an actual food forest food forest that exists. At the moment, it's orchard with on transition into a food forest. Mm. So, like someone, is this? Eh. Eh. <laughs> someone here yesterday, uh, uh, Melissa, hold it, hold it and uh, we'll talk later. Okay. Um, say that our brain, like in all those old parts of our brain, is uh, very happy when we are in abundance. When we are in a place that we can ta -ta, go there, grab the fruit, uh, sleep on the floor, uh, like when, when we have everything that we don't want. When everything is reproduced by themselves and uh, we, we can float around without, with all our needs coming. Paradise. So, <laughs> so actually, uh, from the abundance of the capitalism to the abundance of paradise, like we're in transition. So for uh, abundance is what, where we want to go. Like is a theory about natural succession that is not possible to happen at the moment. But if you want to, like people that are in, into the ecology and biology, or people want to search, search it, it's fantastic. It's how, like, how uh, geology, yeah, we're right, we're right. It is called natural succession, practically, and it says how, how like, a deserted, not deserted, but like an empty land can become abandoned, but in like several years of recycling the system. So we took it as an idea, it exists. So actually, some forests are abandoned, not all of them, but some are. So we took it as a pattern and we say, okay, let's observe it and let's make it, <laughs> let's, let's create it. So actually we see that the plants are kind of interacting with each other in a way that they share what they need. They need water, they need sun, they need oxygen ah, and nutrients. So for example, if you see, if you see around like uh, in two days we go to the forest. So talk to me or we have the schemes here. So there are, for example, these big, big, big ones. Mm -hmm. Like someone want to play this role? These big ones? Big, big, big ones like this? <laughs> 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 that like, like, like have big, big tr uh, trunks and they take all the sun. Like if they don't have all the sun in their lives, they cannot survive. If you put a shadow over this plant, for example, it will not be very comfortable. Uh -huh. <laughs> then, there are some other guys next to them that they want to survive also, but because of this one that cover all the space, like that, <laughs> they, 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 are, they are doing this. So, so for these guys, like, <laughs> collaborate with them. Then, like, next to them, there are some other more cool. It's okay, like, uh, if I'm half shadowed, it's okay. Like, I can make also very nice fruits. Uh, like, I can also make apricots, almond, peaches. OK, 
Yeah, I'll be a little bit sad though. Be a little bit sad though. So, I'm uh, super happy, you see? <laughs> super happy three. <laughs> so, okay, so, and this actually, in, in the modern society, are very useful. But there is a, like a little bit, uh, Sado produce a lot of fruits that we love. So, and then under them, there are some other nice stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that also don't really care about Sado or not. <laughs> we didn't prepare it. It's just coming to you simultaneously, just to let you know. Eh? It's the intro theater of the next day. It's the intro theater of the next day. It's the intro theater of the next day. It's like this medium tree, very cool, I don't care about uh, Shadow, and then he's his best friend. <laughs> Over there, but this, they live very nicely together, have you seen? And this is producing also some little bears. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are almost alert to the soil. So, in that story, like, all these guys live many, many years. Like, live long time. This guy to, to grow up, depends on where we are, it takes some years. Okay, in the tropics, this type of plants grow very easily and actually take a lot of biomass. Uh, he, then, like, when we are having the floor, that just some, some light is left, there are some people growing. Some people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've seen this film that there's, guy, there's a guy planted inside the earth and they go water them. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, I'll put it on that. Uh, okay, so, so even, even, even next to the ground, there are perennial plants that cover the, the soil and also receive small amounts of light. And then there are like wildflowers, grasses, things that just go and die next year. It's okay. One, two years they lived. Fantastic. They go very quickly, make flowers. Do, 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 do. One day they come, drrr, spread. So it's very quickly. So this <laughs> is a reproduction process. So this is, ah, and then we have these guys that say, okay, like, you have too much space. Let us do also something. So they climb on the others, creating other type of relationship creating micro-ecosystems on the trunks, on the, on the branches. <laughs> so, like, this is more or less what we're going to see in an abundant forest. So we say, okay, let's mimic it. Let's make it. So actually, when we call food forests, we created like intervened paradises <laughs> based on we, we actually transform the agriculture from annual to perennial plants and then also in a small amount of land we create much more uh, space so actually instead of putting the same plants next to each other we use the needs of the plants to create this pattern because this can go on and on and on to reduce the amount of space putting as many plants as possible also at the same time we produce a diversity of yield or products that might come like for example these ones can produce fruit what can this produce for example Sorry, what? What this this type of trees could might produce? Nuts. Nuts? Yeah. What else? Almonds. Okay. Almonds. Yeah. Wood. It can produce wood at a certain point of time for burning for creating. It can also drop the leaves and produce a lot of nice biomass for soil accumulation. Amber, like oil and ambers. What? I don't understand. Like okay. uh, the... Resin. Resin. Also, also possible. You know, also, these guys produce a lot of... Amber. Also, these ones, popular, for example. A lot of biomass. 
a lot of them. And depends on how we use them, we either let them do it by themselves in their own rhythms. But I never understood in food forests where they put the vegetables. The, here. Mm -hmm. Here or the, uh, we finish and I answer, but in generally the, the vegetables. Mostly fruit, always it's fruit. Is, is vegetables are annual and the. Uh, sorry? And they either put it between the three lines. You understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know. The, between the three lines or on the three lines as a. <coughs> but normally they do it between the three lines. And there we didn't mention them, but there are also what's underneath the ground, mm -hmm. like things like potatoes, but yeah, yeah, no, I, are there. Because mm -hmm. it's also with vegetables, like you also have things that yes. you dig out and yes, are covered. This this is a design. Mm -hmm. I mean, you cannot just go and just do it. I mean, okay, it will be nice to do it, but to be sure that the plants are going to survive and thrive. You have to really measure on when you put them according to their needs. Mm -hmm. And um, so th there are also other type of symbiotic relationships. So like, for example, some are friends and want to be together because their fungi are sending the messages that uh, <laughs> come to the party. Yeah, yeah, they like each other. Some are like having like, toxins that would not like to be together. So this is not something that we learn in one day or in another day. Uh, there is an open source uh, platform that is called the Plants for the Future, uh, PFAF. So actually they are like people that feel comfortable in searching plants. You can just go and play and say, for example, I want a plant uh, that um, uh, is okay with the shadow, but uh, I have uh, chestnuts next to it, let's say. So there are a lot of options to play of this is how it's going to work and how it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. This is the, the thing. Because it is not, now I draw it like this and it's simple, but actually it requires a proper design on doing it. Ne, um, um, I, I know that the first time that I heard about permacultural design, it looked very much like something that humans create, like uh, and then you put this here and this there and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and some, in a way, like an artificial, you know. I didn't feel all the mini mimicking in it. But uh, quite recently, again, in this little village that my grandfather is from, we were talking to this old lady, and she told us that, and that's historically looking, that's really recent. She's 90 years old. So when she was working the olive orchards, it was gardens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's a completely different concept than what we see now. Mm -hmm. Today, when we speak with the farmers, like my neighbors, they say, oh, why are you pl planting these lavender flowers, pollinators and stuff? That shouldn't be in the olive with the olives. That's mm -hmm. taking away the nutrients from the olives. Yeah, yeah. Like, cut everything down from the olives. It's really like monoculture yeah. culture, you know. Culture. And she tells us, like, and we see it now because we have orchards like that, they have uh, wild onions that are now alive. They have asparagus that are now there. They have figs, they have cherries, they have lavender, they have medicinal plants, they have like vegetables, they have fat that leave the, uh, you know, um, nitrogen in the everything, but they were not like, <laughs> it was not like it was planned and they were growing it, but it was really like a beautiful, diverse living system and it was a garden, it was not at all this farm. But we are now, uh, something happened with our memory, like someone forgot. Yeah. Yeah. And now they say, no, I remember my grandfather, there were only olives there. No. This, this forgetting, at least to my mind, it's not something that it happened in our public memory unconsciously. It has happened consciously from the industries. Mm -hmm. Like this memory loss, it happened on purpose. Mm -hmm. At least what I say, mm. uh, it's not something that happened because of it. Mm. And not only about permaculture, but... Mm. Uh, is this applicable to all geographical locations? Because I think that it isn't... What example for with North part of Europe or Russia in parts where... Uh, for example, to, I don't know how to say in English, please, someone... Tundra. Tundra, Taiga, Steppa. There is a lot of different geographical places than 
uh, it's different in uh, valleys than on top of the mountain. So I don't think that it can that's be. A, that's I can reply, but I can try. That's a, that's a first, first. No, you go, go, go. You are better. I put on the bicycle rack uh, uh, the book, mm -hmm. how to create a forest garden. Because trees take a lot of time and trial and error is, is slowing you down. You want to have uh, you want to have food, right? <laughs> so trial and error doesn't work so much with the trees. Um, read it. It's a lot of information there with nitrogen fixing plants. So you don't need to. Can you mention this? The nitrogen fixing plants. You can. You can. <laughs> uh, so the bigger tree are usually yes for biomass and are nitrogen fixing. Mm -hmm. So from the family Fabia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I don't know how to say it in English. Um, I don't know. Legumes. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. All types of legumes. Like beans. Chickpeas and beans. Beans. Yeah. Beans. yeah, they're all uh, uh, fixing nitrogen. They have bacteria on okay. their roots that are, are, are fixing the nitrogen from the soil and air and, and uh, making it available for other plants, right? So, so just, yeah, just it's to check, you basically have to find appropriate plants for appropriate geographical location. Yes, yes. Okay. yes. Okay. Uh, yes so but you cannot put about every plant everywhere, but you have no, to find... No, you don't have uh, to put every plant okay. everywhere, no. uh, is the thing that you have to learn it. Is applied everywhere, is possible. But so for example, I'm not sure uh, how like I can grow these big trees in some parts where... No, the thing is that you don't do it with the first, that's why I say like this is a thing, is 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 a science of how to do it mm -hmm. behind it. Sometimes it requires a lot of research, a lot of observation of the land, mm -hmm. a lot of planning and designing in advance of what you want to do, and uh, there are resources also. So like all actually all the permaculture design course that we actually don't do it, but is applied in tropics. Um, Anyways, tropic, uh, temperate, temperate climate, ah, temperate, and, moderate climate, okay. yeah. and no, north climate, mm -hmm. like cold climates. So actually, you don't do all the, the, the same things and, and the same techniques in the same locations. Mm -hmm. This is applicable everywhere, uh, the ethics are applicable globally, for example. <laughs> And on depends on where you are and what you observe and what you do, you create your thing. Mm -hmm. Like for example, um, like it's a lot about raised beds. Like people uh, that know a little bit of penogas. Come on, let's make raised beds. <laughs> Come down, let's breathe, and that's why. <laughs> When I wake up, for example... Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Raise beds in Africa. No! no. <laughs> uh, so, for example, uh, that's why we do also a little bit of theory. No. And actually, we would like to plant something. It was our intention. It's actually that we're not allowed. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> we are. We are. Yeah, yeah, we are. Uh, uh, I don't know. I say that our intention was also to do more. So, um, so you know me? Oh, like. People, can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? You don't need to know that. <laughs> like you will sense it uh, tomorrow, maybe when you yes. have a look about permaculture. It's the first thing that you will find. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, there was not a lot of talking about this. But as Emilia mentioned, like we want the people to know why are doing the things. So, so you know from where we start to where we go. Is on ethics and is on on techniques. Is on design. Like. So, so follow a certain logic and a path. So permaculture is more, not about more gardening or agriculture or design. It's about a language that we share among us on how we're going to create a better world. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, no. Yeah, some people say it's a lifestyle, some people say it's a philosophy, some people say it's an ideology, some people say... It's everything, and to say it's nothing. <laughs> and also, like, um, just mentioning, like, now you get a lot of information about permaculture, okay? And there are many paths in permaculture. Not everybody has to be designer. 
Not everybody has to be a gardener. Not everybody has to be an ecosystem restoration manager. Not everybody has to know be how... A teacher. Not everybody has to be a teacher. Not everybody has to be like... There's countless possibilities of what you want to do inside the sphere, if you want to. Inside the sphere of permaculture. It's also understanding that if you are just gonna dive in and just want to know everything at the same time, you're gonna be overwhelmed. Because mm. like, fuck, there's so many things I don't know! <laughs> Happened to me. Yeah. Happened to Dasha. Happened to many people that get to know permaculture and they have nothing to do with it before. Mm -hmm. So, take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it seems like a nice thing. But, like, build up the thing and then find your path inside this chaotic, uh, amazing cloud of possibilities where you feel attracted more to. Like for example, I was attracted more to teaching because I was part of this program many times and I like non-formal learning and I like this community-like uh, experiences so I went like, okay, I want to start teaching. Even if I was not so experienced in like designing and implementing permaculture, I went into that and I'm continuing on that.